Hello guys and gals, Board now back with you on this video I will be talking about the first episode of the new HBO series Mayor of East Town and it is called Miss Lady Hawk herself. So this is HBO's big news show. It's going to be a limited one-off series. It stars Kate Windsor as the title character living in her, her hometown, East Town, this small town. Local small town cop who is popular amongst the community generally and has is highly respected in the town but has fallen on hard times in recent years she's she's divorced from her husband she has a family who she has kind of a mixed relationship with we get to know them a bit in the pilot and she has a little bit of a drinking problem but one of the things that that's going to sort of move the drama forward is that she has a case hanging over from over her head from the past it sort of citing lack of evidence lack of any new information and basically that she she felt there was no nowhere else to go and, and sort of d downtrodden and sort of the the mother of the girl who went missing in in the case in question makes an appeal on on TV where she offers an a reward locally to anyone who can help find her daughter or or at least catch you know have has any information on the case and this puts pressure on on mayor to reopen the case to, to look back into it, including from her chief of police. And Mayor is is very stubborn about it or very determined no, she was right to um shut the case and that yeah. She kind of has this assumption about it that the the daughter of of the mother apparently has a bit of a reputation as like a drug addict or a horse or thing and she kind of has this assumption that she probably is dead that they just haven't found the body like she she got herself into trouble um but there's the pressure in that and there's a bit of a clash between her and the mother at one point because they know each other quite well and there's a scene later on in the episode quite late on at this ceremony which is at like this basketball court and I'll talk more about that, but that's just because Mare, and this is a nice little character beat, is, it's like a gathering of this famous girls basketball team who, who represent in this school, obviously years ago now, and Mare was like a top player for that, and that's why they're, they're all getting together and they're being brought out on this stage, or, well, on the basketball court. And that leads to a bit of heat between Mare and Dawn, the mother. So it's it's going to be partly about Mare's um, personal life with her family, and but also with, with the case as well. And... That's the setup. But by the end of the first episode, she is edging towards like reopening the case certain developments in her personal life I'll say sort of motivate her and, and she does sort of have a change of heart by the end but that's that's the setup and I really liked this first episode I thought it was very strongly written a nice sort of pacing it did a good job of like introducing like the characters and the world of the show um I think it's a great role for Kate Winslet. I think she's one of those actresses who really is very good at transforming herself and really disappearing into a role. Very committed, so you really believe her as this sort of deadpan, downtrodden, very cynical sort of person. Because she, she has a very unconventional like way that she approaches the cases or, or her dealings with people. Uh, so uh, earlier in the episode, she has to deal with this case where of, of this, this woman has stolen like some stuff from their house and he has like a drug problem which factors into it. 
and Mare has to deal with it, and she's there on the scene with, like, another officer, and we sort of see her very, very sort of cynical, very kind of um, no-nonsense sort of persona coming out, and the way she not only pulls no, no punches, but it's also very harsh to people. But we also see why she is is a, is a good cop, why why she does have smarts, why she just knows a certain way to 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 sort sort things out. And there are li- little hints of her humanity in it. So um, she she does this ploy where she kind of outsmarts like the character Freddy, I think his name was, with like a promise of saying, you know. If if you don't come out and surrender, I'm I'm gonna get like the canine police dog in, and he's he's very sort of like elderly and gets the guy Freddy, and has him in custody. She also realizes because they're at his house that there's um no no central heating, which I think could have been like a comment on kind of you know, this sort of small dead-end town. He does take sympathy on, on Freddy and tries to work out the best scenario because oh, when when push comes to shove, she, she says, no, I don't want to press charges, even though, like, she's clearly pissed off at him. But Mayor tries to talk her into to letting him stay there because that night because he has no central heating. And when she says, no, I can't let him stay here, Mare, you know, finds him, like, a hostel or somewhere like that for tonight, some sort of a shelter, until they sort things out the next day. So there's little hints in, in a scene like that that she does have sort of humanity and a heart. Um, as I said, very good performance from Kate Windsor. I think this is the sort of role she excels at. Because um, I think she's very good at doing deadpan as well and kind of world weary. Um, there are some some good lines in this, some good moments of humour, and I did like the character beat of her being this um, big star, uh, like basketball star at her high school. There's just an irony about that, the fact that. She's now down on her luck as a cop. And one of the things I love about the character, which sort of endeared me to her, was that she's quite, she's a reluctant hero, I would say. I think that's like an appealing quality. But yeah, Kate Windsor, I think, does bring, even though she's quite an awkward, difficult character, I think does bring quite a lot of humour to the role, does bring a sort of relatability to the role. line, actually, later on when she when she's talking to the guy Pierce character, this guy she meets after the basketball thing at the bar, Richard his name is, where she says, you know, basically I made a fa- a famous slam dunk kind of thing at this basketball game. And Richard says, well, is that a big deal? And she says, anywhere else it wouldn't be, but, but in East Town. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, so I really like that, and that's something which her and Richard sort of connect over because he's he's this ex writer who's now he's recently moved to East Town, teaching at the moment, but he's in a similar like position as Mayor because he was this sort of failed writer, kind of, or at least a one-hit wonder, because he only had one book, which was, like, big in the 90s, and, and he mentions it was turned into a TV movie at, at one point, but besides that, he, his career never really went anywhere, which I guess is now why he's teaching. So there's a nice little parallel, and a very good supporting cast as well. You you have Jean Smart in here as Mayor's mother. You have David Demon from The Office. He plays her, her ex-husband. You also have Ju- Julia Nickerson, who was in The Outsider last year and been in a few other things. I think she's really good. I think she was one of the standout supporting characters. She, she played one of Mayor's close friends who also was on this basketball team. So when there's 
quite a bit of tension between Mare and um, Dawn at the ceremony. She's the one trying to like step in between them and particularly telling Mare who just won't let her go to this is not the time. Let's let's just do this and, and then we can sort it later. And I thought she was very like likable and, and had a sort of a presence to her as well. Her character as with Richard, they do sleep together and, and at first it looks like Mare's not gonna pursue it any further. She's like, nah, this looks like it'll be a fair one time anything but then he does kind of charm her and win her over and she kind of agrees to um that yeah she, he can call her sort of thing she even gets a signed book out of the deal so, so you, you can't say any fairer but I think there's certain things that are set up in this episode that you wonder if they could factor into this cold case like could Richard I mean have something to do with it who knows i mean he's this like mystery guy out of town or will that just be part of like her personal life and he i guess they could still work him in somehow but is there more to him that than meets the eye i guess it's possible uh, i did enjoy the stuff with mare and her family they felt like quite a natural family you got a sense of tension between them and clearly you have Jean Smart as the mother and her like sort of fractious relationship with Mare. One of the big plot moments in the episode is that Mare finds out that her ex-husband is going to get remarried. There's basically, <laughs> as it turns out, there's an engagement party um, happening <laughs> sort of downstairs in the basement of their house, if you like, um, ju just to pile the misery more on there because she finds out that her family knew about it before her, and then the added insult of the the party happening below her in the basement, so she literally has to listen to it. And it turns out because she's got a teenage daughter, tip about the engagement and. And and she she's like in a band. They they play at one point at the, at the party. And why why Mare's husband left her broke up. And why maybe he you can see he's a likable guy, and you can see why he would be into like his fiance sort of thing. But Mare, as I said, has a couple of children. She also has a disabled son which I, I think he might be from a different father. I just got that impression. The other big bit of drama is with this young mother called Erin, who her, she's separated from her partner, and but they had a kid together. And at one point with, with his girlfriend, his current girlfriend, and she's basically really jealous and thinks that Aaron has been like texting Dylan Dylan and maybe trying to get together with him and, and is quite aggressive but also there's this thing where Aaron wants D Dylan to, to pay for ear surgery for, for her son when she's talking to a friend she 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 says that she has she has sort of seen Dylan like she saw him like I think just the ones, but that they did sort of get together. Um, but there's a new guy who's interested, a new guy who texts her, and his girlfriend has got wind of what happened between him and him and Aaron. And so she's basically tricked Aaron that there is no guy. It's it's a setup. And it's like, are oh, you going to stay away from from my 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 boyfriend, bitch? I think if I have a small complaint probably with the episode is I thought the girlfriend was a bit over the top in her scenes and yeah, that felt a little bit forced. Actually, Mare's daughter who sees this and she actually like comes in and, and saves her and so obviously you can see those plots sort of intercepting. A, a body appears in the water at the end where we see like a body which I think was Erin even though she's she's saved at the time but I, I'm pretty sure it was Erin some first episode I, I liked it a lot it's looking promising
it, it's looking like this could be a, another good one let me know what you think in the comments below so i will continue with this i'll be back with episode two next week like and subscribe all that stuff you can get me on twitter at keith beard and just to remind you you can donate to the channel now if you want to support the channel in in any way just maybe just throw a few bucks or pounds whichever way inclined you are just a little bit to support as little as you like basically i'll put there's a do, do, there's a donate nate button for my my paypal account so i'll put that in the description but yeah thanks guys see you again soon goodbye